Well, I think that's a perfect segue into the, the situational dependence to say, how do we know when our treatment strategy has actually been effective for shutting down a relapse? And so let's turn to the final portion of this, which lines up with the final portion of um, the optimizing MS relapse management um, approach uh, presentation that you're making here. We've talked about assessing the relapse. We've talked about treating it. How do we assess our outcomes? How do we know to, uh, Sam, your point, whether the patient has made as much of a recovery as we can expect or if we need to retreat or further treat? This is where the ARMS questionnaire really comes into play, which you, you already described. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about how the ARMS um, tool can be used for relapse assessment in the community. So again, I, you know, I think if we, if we start off with the tool assessing the relapse, and there's a place on there for saying after all of this, no, we don't think this was a relapse. Turns out it was a pseudo relapse or whatever. So I mean, it's just because you're going into this doesn't mean you're committing to the fact that yes, this is a relapse. So you do the assessment, you, you know, there's check boxes for the, the symptoms that you have. Um, but then at about a month later, and f with our reliability and validity testing, that's what we did. We looked at about a month afterwards. Um, you're asking people about what, if any, changes have they noticed? Have they been improvements? Have they worsened? Um, what sort of treatment did they get? Did they get IV steroids? Did they get oral steroids? Did they get plasma exchange? What, what is it that they got? And how effective do they feel that, that treatment was for this current relapse? So the two-part arms tool, again, one, one page for the initial assessment, one page for the assessment afterwards. And the assessment at the end is really meant to be done over the phone. So there's no harm in it. it you're, nothing lost if that's what you're going to do with it. Well, I think that's an important point that that's, it's a self-assessment. It's a yeah. patient reported outcome mm -hmm. in essence. Um, if we do bring the patient in and examine them, we get sort of additional information that we can use. The, the main disability scale that we've had all these years is the EDSS. Um, the way relapses are defined in trials is typically using a change in EDSS, so a measurable change on one of the functional systems, as you described, vision, uh, motor, pyramidal, that is uh, 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 brainstem, et cetera, sensory. Do you use the EDSS in practice at the University of Pennsylvania to, to assess the, the level of disability that a patient has from a relapse and the extent of their recovery? Um. We do, but not with the consistency we would like to. Sure. Uh, and in large measure, it has to do with uh, the time allotted for patient assessment because it takes time to do an EDSS. The EDSS was developed by John Kurtzke back in 1983, and it's still with us. Unfortunately, it's not a linear scale. So even though the numbers go from 0 to 10 with 0 0.5 increments between them, assessed on the basis of these functional systems that Steve just mentioned, the pyramidal cerebellar, the brainstem, the sensory, the bowel and bladder, the visual and the cerebral, each being graded from zero having no disability, to five or six having a severe disability, and then uh, calculating a score of the zero to 10 on that basis. This is a scale that is heavily weighted to gait. And once you get the 4.5 on the scale, you're using a cane, you're using some assistive device in order to, to walk. Um, so it doesn't as effectively encompass all the systems as we'd like it to. It's the best we have for now. There have been other iterations. And in part, we don't use it uh, as consistently as we'd like to because really of the the time uh, allotted to see each of our patients. Though we do find that it's quite helpful. I will say though, that there's a variability in the EDSS and even in clinical trials, when one does EDSS and looks at EDSS at three months and six months and looks for a change of one between each of them, um, it's not necessarily a persistent change. So that some people revert back to where they were before. So it's the best we have, uh, but still uh, probably not 100%.